I'm Chloe Hamilton. And I'm Fletcher Six. And, and we, we are, are coming, coming to you from Tomahawk, Tomahawk TV, TV News. Tomahawk TV News. Montague County's only newscast coming at you from Nocona High School. The American Red Cross is an organization that helps those who are in need of blood. They raise awareness by assembling blood drives through many communities. Nocona High School has an annual blood drive that helps many people that have been through traumas or have sustained serious injuries. We have many people involved in this process, such as the student council or even people from our community. Some of the requirements to host a blood drive is, number one, you need to have adult supervision and most definitely have leadership in, within the school or the community. You have to be 17 without a parent permission. And then you also have to be 16 with a parent consent. Some of the other requirements is they have a, a weight requirement. You have to weigh at least 100 pounds and you can't have traveled without or with, outside of the United States. And that's usually what keeps people from donating is they've recently traveled during the summertime to keep them from donating is they've traveled outside the United States or that they've had a certain illness. A lot of times, the, one of the reasons that they donate is if when they're a senior, if you've donated at least four times, then you get a red cord to wear at graduation. And then there's people who have, have a personal friend who needed blood, and so they know the importance of donating blood. This year, the last blood drive we donated, there was about 36 pints of blood, and we average anywhere from 36 to 46, just depending on the day. With other schools, I'm not sure who actually hosts the blood drive, but when I took over student council, they always did it. So we just kept the tradition going. And also with the blood drive, there are scholarships available. Once we hit a certain amount of percentage of, of pints, you know, they give back to the seniors. Once the blood is donated, they take it to a facilities where they actually run tests to make sure that it's good blood, and there's no infection or anything, and then it just goes into a bank to wherever or whomever needs it. A special thanks to both Miss Wilson for the information about the blood drop and American Red Cross for their invaluable work in the country. Also, a special thank you to the Student Council for helping us pursue this event each year. High school football, by far the most important thing ever to happen in the state of Texas. And the small town of Nocona is no exception to this. So we sat down with the Indians coaches to find out exactly why we're having such a fantastic start to the 2016 season. And this is what Coach Shaw had to say. My role on the football team is defensive coordinator, which is basically I'm in charge of all the defense from seventh grade through 12th grade. Um, I'm in charge of game planning, scheming, uh, pretty much everything that, that happens on the defensive side of the ball for 14 weeks of football season. A lot more hours that go behind the scenes uh, rather than just practice and games. A lot of hours people don't see. Let's go, o. You know, being a coordinator or a head coach of a sport's kind of like that. It's different from just being an assistant. There's all kinds of stuff you have to think about that you never thought of before. Uh, some of the stuff we've done differently this year compared to the other two years I was here, um, our core, varsity core, is a lot different. It's a lot differently made up um, than it has the last two years. Uh, our senior class isn't real heavy. There's only five of them, but um, most of the kids we're counting on, uh, and you know, that they're they're more engaged in football. Football is a favorite thing of theirs. It's not just something that they're doing during the fall. It's uh, something that they love to do, and they're all about it, and they're thinking about it all year long. And uh, that and the buy-in, you know, working out in the off-season, everything that we've done throughout the off-season is so much stronger than it's been in the past. Coach Shaw had some very interesting points in the team's success this year. He also had a few points on new players. Uh, a bunch of those guys like Cade Breeze, Jose Ojeda, um, Riley McCaslin, uh, just to name a few. Um, you know, played basketball and baseball for the last two years, not football, and they, they hadn't played football in a while. Um, I think they had a feeling we were, we were going to have a successful year. You know, our district, our realignment really helped us out. We got rid of Cisco and Eastland. Um, 
So they knew we were we had a better chance to be successful, and I think they missed it a lot too. Talking to some of them, um, guys like that, Fletcher Six moving back and getting him back, um, you know, kids like that, and then a bunch of the sophomores that were counting on that got a lot of playing time on JV last year as freshmen because of injuries or people we moved up, things like that. So um, you know, it's not just three or four kids that hadn't played before. It's a bunch of kids, a bunch of sophomores. We we have a bunch that have never played varsity football before. The team is basically taking a spot in the playoffs. Here are some of the necessities for a playoff run. Luck has a lot to do with a playoff run. Now making the playoffs, you know, like in our district this year, we're, we're set up where we could have some success in district and make the playoffs. Playoff runs a lot of times in my experience and, you know, other coaches I know and have talked to, uh, you have to have a good draw. And what I mean by that is your first round opponent isn't, you know, a, a Canadian or a Idaloo or a Cisco type team. It's a team you can compete with and play with. Region 1 is stacked with power football teams and the fact that we're not in that region, you know, so if, if you're Region 1 you make playoffs in it, uh, you're one and done a lot of times because those teams are so strong. Region 2, I'm not saying it's a worse region, I mean it's a little bit easier. There, there's not as many solid teams in there. So you get past the first round uh, depending on your seed in the playoffs, you know, what you get in district, uh, you can win a couple games. Um, if you win district, you know, your first round opponent usually isn't that hard. So uh, luck has a little bit to do with it, the draw, realignment, and then, you know, having a bunch of kids who are hungry for it. If they want it, you know, they haven't felt it before, they hadn't felt that winning, that playoff game. You know, that's why so many teams, when they make playoffs for the first time, they bring up all their JV too, so those kids get a taste of it. Um, because, you know, success breeds success. And it, we've been short on that in football around here the last few years, and, you know, we could use all we need. Other years or other places I've worked, there's usually one, two, three seniors in a bunch that, you know, you're not going to miss. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of it. Or they're replaceable, you know, a little more replaceable. We have a younger kid that can replace them. But these five guys have been with us or with me for the last three years since I've been here. Um, they all understand stuff. Uh, the way I've wanted it done on the defensive side and offensively for Coach Keck as well. Losing seniors is never easy, um, especially, you know, like I said, these five guys. You know, Parker, Marcus, Tristan, Tyler, and Rico. I mean, all solid athletes. They all work hard. They know their positions. They know where to line up. This is almost the perfect group for this year, the, the combination we've had, because we're so young, we're, but we're learning and we're getting varsity experience but we couldn't have asked for five better guys to lead us there as far as our leaders, our seniors, because they do, they do everything right. They do everything we ask. And, you know, I've, I've been coaching eight years, and not always do seniors do what you say. Some seniors just don't get it or don't care. We don't have that problem here. A special thanks to Coach Shaw for sitting down with us and giving us the inside scoop on what's going on from a coach's standpoint. We hope to see a great rest of the season from the Nokona Indians. Shock the nation. Until next time, this is Cade Breeze and Connor Barrett signing off for Tomahawk Sports. Hello everybody, my name is Rowdy Blevins. And I'm Garrett Stone. And welcome to NHS Gamer. Now this week's episode is a special one. Not just because it's our first, but because in this episode we are doing an interview. Throughout the ages, there have been different games that have set standards and changed history in the video game business. The first person genre, however, has been one that has made gaming history time and time again. Older shooters like Call of Duty have been the measuring stick for the new releases like the Fallout games, GTA 5 with their new first person mode, CSGO, and Arma 3. I talked to a local gamer to get his opinions on which shooters truly changed history. The first first person shooter game that probably changed everything was probably Doom because it was the first person shooter and then Quake was also very important in creating our first person shooter franchise because it was one of the more popular ones that came out at the time and then obviously Call of Duty won because it was it's a very big franchise now and people enjoy that game. The original Doom differs from the one that just that just recently came out because obviously quality is a lot better and there's more personalization in the game now than there was back then because back then it was just you got what you got and then you know went through levels not really be able to customize anything, but now there's customized classes, there's different uniqueness of each character that you can have of each player that they want to customize their character as. Personally, Fallout 
and Call of Duty are very similar. They're, they're, they're both first person shooters, but Fallout has more of a timely like grind, grind to it. They grind out for more resources and equipment and stuff. And Black Ops and Call of Duties differs from Skyrim and Fallout because they're a lot slower paced. And I think they should be categorized first person shooters because that's what they are. That's what they originally were intended to be. Honestly, I think it's always been the same thing. First person shooters are always either like team deathmatch, kill the other team and don't let them kill you, or like capture the flag, take their flag, take it back to your base. It's, it's always been the same thing. What I'm hoping for is that with first person shooters, they become more of a personalized set of characters where you customize your character, you, you decide what his fate is, what he, what he starts as, what he becomes, and more of just like a generalized like you are in a video game. I think VR is going to make a big difference in first person shooter because they're coming out with new ways of instead of just sitting there using a controller and using VR and just seeing through it where you can actually stand up and run and have a plastic gun in your hand and actually like feel like you're more immersed in the game than you would be just looking at a TV or a screen. With first person shooters and like VR and with the uh, the motion sensors, it, it can also be used as exercise. So uh, instead of having to go out and run 10 miles, you could play 20 minutes of a video game in VR and still get the same health benefit as you would if you were running. A special thanks to Cade Breeze for his expertise on first person shooters. This has been NHS Gamer. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Avery Hawthorne here with Indian Insight, getting the insight on the new lives of freshmen here with Rowdy Blevins. So, we've heard from past freshmen that they have experienced different changes from middle school to high school. What changes have you noticed? Uh, one thing I've noticed for sure is the classes, classes they've changed. Uh, it's much more diverse. You can choose your own endorsement. It's not such a forced curriculum as it was in middle school. Uh, another thing I noticed was uh, the off-campus lunch. lunch. You weren't able to do that in middle school mainly because nobody could drive and just really didn't have the time for it with everything going on. Uh, what are some of the rules that have changed? Uh, the rules really haven't changed all that much. The pen penalties are still the same with the tardies and the absences. Where do you think you fit in best with all the new people that are in high school? Well, I really fit in best whenever, whenever I'm with my friends. That hasn't really changed from middle school. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I'm with my friends, I can just act about or act however I want to, just act, be myself. I don't have to put on a fake mask on, to impress other people. Okay. Do you miss anything from high, middle school? Uh, well, the only thing that's changed is that the teachers have changed. I've met, I miss some of the teachers from middle school, uh, mainly because I've bonded with them so much, and they, it's real fun to be around them, and I haven't really bonded with a lot of the teachers in high school yet. Thank you, Rowdy Blevins, for this week's Indian Insight. You're welcome. Hello, Nocona High School. My name is Logan Barnes, and we have an interesting story for you today. We have interviewed Mr. Flanagan about his new role as the assistant principal here at NHS. Um, yes, I've actually been the elementary principal at a uh, previous campus that I was at. Um, so, been, and I've also been an assistant band director, so I've had a little bit of experience in a variety of, of places. Coach Keck's role as both the um, assistant principal and, and athletic director, um, his, his assistant principal role, the way I understand it, he deals a lot with the um, tardies, detentions, um, some of the disciplinary side of things, parking lot duty, making sure everyone's got parking passes on their cars, all of those kinds of things that you have to take care of at a district. Um, my role tends to deal more with uh, some of the special programs of the school. I'm, I'm in um, some of the special education meetings and 504 plan meetings, which 504 plans are for students who have other impairments that are not necessarily special ed, but they need some sort of accommodations. And I'm, my job is to go through and make sure that some of those things are taken care of um, by law and what is required. Um, so. We have two very different roles. His has to deal more with the student side of things and dealing with students as far as um, on a day-to-day -day basis, and mine is more of a special programs kind of a role. Mr. Flanagan spends many hours here at NHS. Here we have him explain to us how he separates work from home. 
Well, one thing I learned early in my career was um, leave school at school. When I go home, I don't think about what I've got to do at work. Um, very rarely do I take work home with me. I get it done in the hours that I'm at school so that when I get home, I have time to spend with my kids. Um, the, the, I'm trying to think how I want to word this. The role of being a dad and being a teacher in general is tough sometimes because if you, uh, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in your job and just take everything home with you and be working on it 24 seven as a teacher. So I've just had to learn that, okay, when I leave work, I put that part aside. There's, there's times where I have to be an administrator on duty at some athletic events. Um, and, and so that takes a little bit more time away from my, my family, but, um, my family also goes with me to almost every band event. Um, so we get time, even though I'm sometimes working, we get time together as family at those events as well. Um, but the biggest thing is you just have to separate the two. We would like to thank Mr. Flanagan for letting us interview him. This has been Logan Barnes. Thanks for watching. That's it for this week's news here at Tomahawk TV News. This is Fletcher Six and Chloe Hamilton signing, signing off, off for Tomahawk, Tomahawk TV, TV News. news. Tomahawk TV News, Montague County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School.